October 17, 2016. Memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop and Martyr. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you once lived following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the desires of our flesh, following the wishes of the flesh and the impulses, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is... The Lord made us, we belong to him. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, his we are, his people, the flock he tends. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for he is good, the Lord whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The Lord made us, we belong to him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do, for I do not have space to store my harvest? And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared... To whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. October 17th, the Memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch. The first reading comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. In this passage, the author contrasts the former life of the people to whom he's writing, and the present life. Before, they've lived in disobedience. They followed the elemental spirits, and these spirits were demonic. They had led them to live lives of the flesh. Now remember, when the word flesh is used, it's not referring to the body. It's referring to our fleshiness, that part of us which drags us down, our earthiness, what St. Augustine would call our concupiscence. That is what we were before God called us, but... God is rich in mercy. He had a plan, and in this plan, Jesus died for us and is glorified in heaven. He's invited us into that glory, and we've received this not because of something we've done. We've received it as an act of grace. 
God graciously forgave us. God invited us into his love. And when we do that by faith, then we are saved. Now, this is one of those passages in Ephesians where we see that this letter probably wasn't written by Paul. Because when Paul uses the word salvation, he refers to what will happen at the last judgment. Whereas here, salvation is an immediate event, something that's happening now. That's the way that Luke and John use salvation. It's called imminent eschatology. It means that the promises for the end of time are already occurring. And this author, whoever it is, probably a disciple of Paul, but with a slightly different vocabulary, is saying that we have been saved through our faith. Paul would normally say we've been justified by our faith. It's a different use of vocabulary. Whichever it is, the message is clear that we have received a gift. We should not brag about who we are and what we're doing. That's important in the spiritual life because sometimes people feel that they deserve a reward because they've measured up, because they've done the right things. And we forget that our growth in the spiritual life is due to God's action in our hearts. It's not something we can program. It is something we can be ready for by preparing our hearts, tilling the soil so that when the seed is planted, it'll produce a hundredfold. But ultimately, it's a gift. The Gospel is from Luke 12, 13 to 21. Somebody in the crowd asked Jesus to be a moderator between him and his brother because his brother won't give him his inheritance. And instead of doing that, Jesus refuses to be drawn into this question. In fact, he preaches a parable against greed, against thinking that we're in control. The parable is about a man who has a bountiful harvest, tears down his barns, planning to build new ones, larger ones, so that it can contain all that's been harvested. That very night he dies. And so the message is, don't make huge plans for tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Live a prudent lifestyle. Prepare prudently, but realize that all is in God's hands, much as we heard in the first reading. St. Teresa of Avila once said, how do we make God laugh? Tell him our plans. When we think we're in charge, then God has a way of throwing a wrench into the works to show us that God is in charge. This is a good thing to remember in our spiritual life. It's a good thing to remember in the events of our life. We have to do everything as if it depends upon us, remembering always that it all depends upon God. And may God bless us.